Welcome to Viewpoints. I'm Bill Dwyer, and I'm joined by Dan Kane, Outstanding Thesis Award winner. Dan, your thesis is entitled Twitchuational Awareness. Can you tell me a little bit about your topic? Sure, Bill. I was curious whether or not social media contained any information that public health responders could use in an emergency. So I decided to focus on Twitter. I think Twitter offers an open platform where something that somebody posts is visible by a lot of other people, and it, it, it's a, it seems to make a very good research platform. Now, where did you come up with this idea, Dan? I was inspired by another CHDS alumni, Lori Van Leuven, who did a thesis on the use of social media in Southern California during wildfire season. And how do you think her thesis, or your thesis for that matter, was different than hers? Well, her thesis explored um, during wildfire uh, a local radio station ended up using, trying to harness social media to provide information to the public. And I wanted to look at um, what public health could do. And it, if in a more of a public health type of emergency room, we, we'd be able to get situational awareness that we could use. Okay, so how do you see this topic or this area working? Is it through a command center that's listening to Twitter feeds or is it feedback between public health and the individual tweeter? Ideally, it'd be a, a two-way dialogue. You know, both, there's a lot of information public health wants to give to the public during an emergency, but there's also information that we need. You know, we need to know which areas are most affected, uh, which types of, if you're dealing with diseases, um, different populations might be more susceptible. And we'd like to know who those are, and we, we need to know where to, the most effective ways to deliver resources. So in a, uh, an area and a potential disaster is very apropos for here in California, an earthquake. Can you walk me through how your thesis would apply in an earthquake type situation? I think an earthquake's a great example, so thank you. But um, one thing that, that research has shown in other earthquakes, like in Haiti or the, the earthquake that triggered the Fukushima disaster, um, Twitter and, and text messaging are, are things that come back up very quickly because they don't require a lot of bandwidth you know, and uh, so you might not be able to make a phone call, but you, you might be able to send a tweet. And another advantage is um, Twitter and modern smartphones, they can, they can leverage cell towers, but as well, they can also use Wi-Fi and WiMAX, other technologies. So um, researchers has found that, 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 that Twitter comes up quicker. So Dan, in applying your thesis, how do you see it happening in a real world situation? What I see is it would enable public health to, to get a better idea of, of what is needed at the scene of a disaster. So now um, a lot of the methods we have is to send a, a large number of public health professionals out into the field to do surveys. And uh, in many remote areas or after disasters with roads that are impassable, it can be very difficult. But through the use of social media, um, it can allow us to tap into these conversations and, and hopefully be able to provide people with what they need to get back on their feet. So we're talking about real-time monitoring, not going back after the fact and, and, and looking at the tweets that were, were sent? Yeah, correct. So my, my thesis did look retrospectively, but I think the application of my thesis would be more of a real-time um, surveillance system. And is there any, have you thought about how that would happen? Are we talking, say, a, 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 remote, uh, a remote mobile site that would be tracking Twitter, a Twitter feed, or a command center that would be listening into Twitter? I think the application would be folks back in the agency operations center or emergency operations centers monitoring Twitter there and then feeding uh, the information that they find to the incident managers. Recently, with some of the NSA discussions, people have had great concern about uh, the, the federal government or even state government listening in on those conversations. Do you see this along those lines or do you think the folks that would be uh, utilizing Twitter want to get their information out there? I, I think in an ideal world, the, the public health would have a large enough presence on social media that folks would come directly for uh, to us. In other responses since the snowstorm in the Northeast, say the Boston bombing, would your thesis have some application? I, I think it might, because I, I think I, uh, there was a lot of news reports of folks using social media after the bombing, you know, uh, both to provide information to people and to um, provide information to authorities. Now, how do you think your thesis will help your agency back in Oregon? I'm hoping that it'll help us complete our mission to uh, protect the health of Oregonians. 
Do you see application beyond Oregon? Yeah, absolutely. I, I think um, public health agencies around the nation are just starting to get their feet wet with social media. And I, I'm hoping by showing them that there's useful information out there that this, this will help encourage them to kind of take the plunge. Do you think this will help contribute the relevance of public health to the Homeland Security construct? Well, I hope so. I, I think public health is, is newly recognized as a part of the Homeland Security enterprise. And, you know, we've always been interested in pr protecting the, the public at large. And I, I think we're a natural fit. Dan, thanks so much for sharing this uh, information with us. I think uh, we've all learned a lot about Twitter's application to the Homeland Security construct. And uh, once again, congratulations on being named the Outstanding uh, Thesis Award winner. Well-deserved. Thanks, Bill. It's my pleasure.